Hello guys, welcome to chapter 14 of Because of Windexie. We have not read Because of Windexie for a very, very long time, and I am so sorry for that. My belly's been acting up. I've been having very bad, uh, I've been worrying a lot recently. And I also have, real, and I've also had really bad chest pain too, so I've been trying to, uh, take a break. And not do so much video as see that would help. Just like sit around. So I get my belly aches every night. So there's basically not even a difference. So we actually have like 13 or 14. Like 14 or 15 more chapters to go. Until we're at the end of this. And I can't believe how we started it only, almost two weeks ago. And then bam. It's like a snap of that. And we're done. Like can you believe that? Chapter 14. Sometimes I told Gloria the story. Miss Felony Block had just told me. Or I made it Otis tapping his pointy-toed boots and playing for all the animals. And they always made her laugh. And always made her laugh. And sometimes I made up a story and Gloria Dump would listen to it all the way through from the beginning to end. She told me she used to love to read stories, but she couldn't anymore because her eyes were so bad. She, Can't you get some really strong glasses, I asked her. Child, she said, they don't make glasses strong enough for these eyes. One day, when the storytelling was done, I decided to tell Gloria that Otis was a criminal, and I, I thought maybe I should tell an adult about it. And Gloria was the best adult I knew. Gloria, I said, mm-hmm. She said back, you know, Otis, I don't know him, but I know that you, what you told me about him. Well, he's a criminal. He's been in jail. Do you think I should be afraid of him? What for? I don't know, for, bad th for, for doing bad things, for being in jail. I guess for being in jail, for bad things, I guess, for being in jail. Child, she said, Gloria, let me show you something. She got up out of her chair real slow and, told, and took hold of my arm. Let's, let's the two of us walk all the way to the back of this yard. Okay, I said. We walked and Windexie followed right behind us. It was a huge yard and I'd never been all the way back in it. When we got to a big old tree, we stopped. Look at the tree. Look at this tree, Gloria said. I looked up. There were bottles hanging from it. Just about every branch. Ah! There was whiskey bottles and beer bottles and wine bottles all tied on the, what, on, with, on, all tied on with string. And some of them were clanking against each other and making a spooky kind of noise. I mean, when Dixie and stood and stared at the tree and, uh, <sighs> talking too much. And the hair on top of his head rose up a little bit. And he growled deep. He growled deep in his throat. Gloria Dump pointing pointed his cane at the tree. What, what you think about this tree? I said I don't know. Why are all these bottles on it? Why are all those bottles on it? To the, keep the ghost away, Gloria said. What ghost? The ghost of all the things I'd done wrong. I looked at all the bottles on the tree. You did that many things wrong? I asked her. Mm-hmm. Said Gloria. More than that. But you're the nicest person I know, I told her. Don't mean I haven't, don't mean I have, haven't done bad things, she said. There's, there's whiskey bottles on there, I told her. And beer bottles. Child, said Gloria. Don't, I know that. I'm the one who put them there. I'm the one who drank what was in them. My mama drank, I whispered. I know, Gloria Dump said. The preacher says that sometimes she couldn't stop drinking. Mm-hmm, said Gloria again. That's the way it is for some folks. We get started and we can't stop. And we can't stop. Are you one of those people? Yes, ma'am, I am. But these days I don't drink nothing stronger than coffee. But the whiskey and beer and wine, they did they make you do bad things that are ghosts now? Some of them, said Gloria Dump. Some of them I would have done anyway with alcohol or without it. Before I learned, learned what? Learn what is the most important thing. What's that? I asked her. It's different for everyone, she said. You find out you're on your own, but it's in the meantime, you got to remember you can't always judge people by the things they've they done. You gotta judge them by what they are doing now. You judge Otis by pretty music he plays and how he is, how he is, how kind he is to animals because that's all you know about him right now. Yes, ma'am, I said. And then Dewberry Boys, you try not to judge them too. Harsh, eager, all. And them Dewberry Boys, you try not to judge them too harsh either. All right? All right, I said. All right then, said Gloria Dump. 
and she turned and started walking away. When Dixie nudged me with his wet nose and wagged his tail, when he saw I wasn't doing, he tr do what saw I wasn't doing. He trotted after Gloria. Gloria, I stayed where I was and studied the tree. I wondered if my mama, whenever she was, had a tree full of bottles, and I wondered if I was a ghost to her, the same way sometimes. She sometimes seemed like a ghost to me. Sorry I make mistakes. I'm just not in it today. I'm tired. So I made like 15, 20 mistakes. So that's chapter 14. Let's see how long this chapter is. You know what? We're going to go to chapter 16. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library's air conditioning unit doesn't work very good. And there was only one fan. And from the minute me and Windex he got in the library, he hogged it all. He laid right in front of it and wagged his tail and leaned it blow his and let it blow his fur all around. Some of his fur was pretty loose and blew right off him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan and I worried about the fan blowing him bald. But Miss Fanny said not to worry about either that thing that when Dixie could hog the fan if he wanted, she said. And they had never in her life seen a dog seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes when Miss Fanny was telling a story she would have a fit she would have a fit. There were small fits and they didn't last long, but what happened was she would, would forget about what she was saying. She would just stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when that happened, when Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right at Miss Fanny's block side, he would sit up tall and protect sit up tall protecting her with his ears standing up straight on his head like soldiers and when miss fanny stopped shaking and started talking again when dixie would lick her hand and lay back down in front of the fan whenever miss fanny had one of her fits it reminded me of when dixie in a thunderstorm there were a lot of thunderstorms that summer and i and i got real good at holding on to when dixie whenever they came i hold on i held on him and comforted comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him just the same way he tried to comfort Miss Franny and when she had her fits only I held on to when Dixie for another reason too I hold on him tight so he wouldn't run away it all made me think of a Gloria Dump I wondered who comforted her when she heard those bottles clunking together those ghosts shattering all the things she had done wrong I wanted to comfort Gloria Dump and I decided the best way to do that would be would be to read her book Read it to her loud enough to keep the ghost away. And so I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown up friend whose eyes are going on her. Are, whose eyes are going on her. And I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions? Miss Franny said, Yes, ma'am. I have suggestions, of course. I have suggestions about Gone with the Wind. What's that about? I asked her, Well, why, said Miss Franny, it's a wonderful story about the Civil War. The Civil War, I said, I do not tell me you have never heard of the Civil War, Miss Franny blocked, blocked like she was going to faint. She waved her hands in front of her face. I knew about the Civil War, I told her. That was the war between the South and the North over slavery. Slavery, yes, said Miss Franny. It was also, uh, it was also about states, rights, and money. It was a terrible war. My great-grandfather fought in that war. He was just a boy. Your great-grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Look at Miss W. Block. Now there's a story. When Dixie yawned real big and lay down on his side with a thump and a sigh. I swear he knew that phrase. Now there's a story. And he knew it. Man, we, were, we weren't going anywhere real soon. Go ahead and tell me, Miss Franny, I said. And I sat down cross-legged next to Win Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get him to share that fan, but he pretended he was asleep, but he wouldn't move. I was all settled in and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinched face Amanda Wilkinson came in. When Dixie sat up and stared at her, he tried out a smell on her, but she didn't smell back, so he laid back down, he, so he lay down again. Rude! I just said that that's not in the book. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desk. Well, said Miss Franny, maybe you shouldn't mind, maybe you shouldn't mind waiting. I am telling Andy Opel, Opal, a story about Opal, not Opel, Opal, about 
a story about my great grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. It would just be it would be just one moment. Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh. Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh and stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was. I could tell. Come over here. Come sit over here, said Miss Freddy. Oh, Stan, thank you, said Amanda. Seat yourself, Miss Freddy shrugged. Now, where am? Where was I? Oh, yes. Lodimus Lunimus, W. Block. That's it for chapter 16. And, um, we'll get to chapter 17. That's 15. Wait, is that 14 and 15? So we'll get to 16 and 17 in the next video. If they're not too long. Sorry I keep making mistakes. I know I made more mistakes in this um, video than I did in any other video. That's for a reason because I'm tired and I just don't feel like reading today that much. So, I am tired. We've read chapter 14 and 15. We're reading 16 and 17. And then we're so close to the end. Once we get to chapter 20, we'll have like 8, 9 more chapters. I am just so glad you guys could sit down and watch these videos. I know I make mistakes and you guys are probably... Like, don't want to watch people who make mistakes reading, or at least don't want to watch, or you find it, like, annoying. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect. Like, if you thought I was going to be perfect, then no. All right? We all have our flaws. Especially when I'm tired. I can't say words right whenever I'm tired. Sometimes I make I make mistakes. I mistake in my words, and I say things wrong. That's just how I be. There's a new series coming out on this YouTube channel called... The Hardy Boys. And I'm gonna be reading all the chapters and all the books in the series, and making make and make and might make reviews on them. <sighs> I'm talking way too much. So I mean, we made a freaking 12 minute video about me talking, and like three or four minutes already of me talking, like two. I think. Now it's gonna be about three minutes, two minutes actually. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you on next one. Adios. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Turn the post notifications on, baby. Baby. Why don't you just do that? It's free. You can then subscribe when you want, baby. I make mistakes and that's okay. Because I'm here to teach you your perfect the way that you are. So don't change yourself because that's not needful. So sit back and watch my vid videos. Come on, sit it back. We also have funny parts. We have funny parts. We have funny parts. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. We have funny parts, and I'm lightheaded. I'm kind of dizzy from doing that, actually. And I'm done today reading. Do, 